Back to the situation in Japan. Efforts uh, to avert a nuclear catastrophe are continuing. 250 more workers are on site at the Fukushima plant. They've been using helicopters and water cannons in an effort to cool off damaged reactors. But the situation remains critical and radiation is still leaking. Joining us now from Vienna, Austria, is nuclear engineer Robert Kelly. He used to manage the emergency radiological response team for the energy department here in the United States. He's on the phone with us. Uh, Robert, I want to talk about the immediate term risks. Right now, they're trying to use water cannons. Uh, they're no longer pumping water into the reactors. They're not sure that they can even get it there. Is this going to work? Well, I think it's going to be difficult. I was watching the pictures this morning of the helicopters dropping water. Uh, it doesn't come down like a big glob by the time it had reached the top of the reactor. It was spreading as a cloud of mist, like you see over a forest fire. So it doesn't look like that's very effective. And as far as things like the water cannons, if people can't approach the buildings closely enough uh, from the ground with the high radiation levels, they're just going to be spraying water kind of randomly up there, hoping some of it goes into the pools. Uh, Robert, if, if Greg Yasko is right, the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, if he's right in his testimony yesterday, and the fuel rods, the spent fuel rods in Reactor 4 really are totally exposed, and there's nothing stopping them from continuing to heat and ultimately to catch fire, how much time do the Japanese have before the situation is literally beyond control? Well, I think it's very close to beyond control right now. I think they have to start thinking of a whole new series of, of mitigating measures. Uh, uh, like I what, for they're example? Way, well, they're, they're way past the playbook now. I think they're having to, to improvise as they go. Uh, maybe they can start thinking in terms of, of covering it with some sort of a blanket or sarcophagus. Um, whether they can start to use concrete, although I don't suppose is, you can pump that up there. Robert, anywhere. I don't want to interrupt you, but, but isn't yes, concrete, con doesn't concrete pose a problem? They, they used concrete in Chernobyl, but that was only after the blast. If they put concrete on top of it now, is there not the risk that they might actually just contain pressure and you'd ultimately get a nuclear explosion? No, you won't get a nuclear explosion, but I think you need something, desperately need something to hold in the radionuclides that are coming out. You can't stop the gases. You need something to hold down those um, uh, uh, particles that are coming out. Maybe they can find a polymer spray to put over it, something of that type. But they they're really have lost control at this point. And now the question is, if they lose control at one facility and it drives everybody out of the area, then they've lost the others as well. It's an unbelievably frightening scenario. Robert, thank you for joining us for those insights. Robert Kelly, he used to manage the emergency radio, radiological response team for the Department of Energy. He just told us the situation is out of control, and now the greatest risk is that not just one, but all six reactors are beyond Japan's ability to control a nuclear meltdown.